It's the world's most well-known secret society. Rich with symbols and ritual, it's a source of legends, parodies. Who controls the British crown? Who keeps the metric system down? We do. We do. And conspiracy theories. Because so much organized crime uses the Masonic secret system and the good old boy network to be able to get away with murder. And I mean murder. Welcome to the world of Freemasonry. True or false, the Masons are a secret society. No, it's, that's false. UCLA history professor Margaret Jacob is one of the world's leading experts on Freemasonry. True or false, Freemasonry is a religion. No, it's false. True or false, Masons were behind the American Revolution. False. False, false. Okay, but what about on the dollar bill? The, the eye oh, yeah, and the, the pyramid? Yeah. I mean, that's Masonic, right? No, it's, it, 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 everybody says it's Masonic. In fact, it's a commonplace in the 18th century, that particular set of symbols. True, Freemasons laid the cornerstone of America. Well, at least some of its most iconic structures. So what is Freemasonry? Simply put, it's the world's oldest and largest fraternity. It's membership a who's who of world history. George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Winston Churchill, Mozart, Davy Crockett, Franklin Roosevelt, Harry Houdini, Gerald Ford, Henry Ford, John Wayne, even Colonel Sanders. If you want to be a Mason, you can petition a local lodge for membership. You'll need to demonstrate good character and belief in some sort of supreme being. Oh, and in almost all lodges, it's men only. Next, you're up for a vote, says New York State Grand Master James Sullivan. The lodge votes to accept you, and then you have the three degrees that you go through. Once you earn the third degree, and yes, that's where the phrase comes from, you can join any number of Masonic offshoots. Take Brent Morris. He's a 33rd degree Mason and a historian at the House of the Temple for the Supreme Council of the Scottish Rite of the Southern Jurisdiction. You know, it's that big building in Washington, D.C. This isn't like the Masonic Vatican, but it's, a, it's an important building. It's an important building. I'm absolutely right. It's, it's one branch of Freemasonry in the United States, and that's our headquarters building. Inside, the Temple Lodge Room is a stunner. And downstairs, there's this. Uh, this is uh, the flag that Bulls Aldrin took to the uh, moon with him. This flag, Supreme Council 33 Southern Jurisdiction, That's went, to, went the to the moon. Wow. Now, if tiny hats and small cars are your thing, then there are the party animals of Freemasonry, the Shriners. You may know them better for their 22 children's hospitals, where patients don't have to pay a cent. The Masons are philanthropic. They reportedly donate $2 million to charity every day. Freemasonry began in medieval Europe as a guild for stonemasons, but lived on as a social organization. 1717, the first Grand Lodge is created in London. And now there are many men in these lodges that are not associated with, with the trade organization. They're gentlemen masons. They're not stonecutters. They're not stonecutters. And so something has happened. A modern fraternity has been created. It wasn't long afterward that the conspiracy theories began. All these men with different neighborhoods, different professions, meeting in the cafe, breaking bread together, doing rituals. What could this be? So the the response on the part of the authorities was, oh my God, this is a conspiracy. And so in 1738, Pope Clement XII issued the Catholic Church's first decree against Freemasonry, and it still applies today. In the U.S., Freemasonry flourished until its secrecy made it the object of suspicion here, spawning America's first third party, the Anti-Masonic Party. It elected eight congressmen, but lost the 1828 presidential election to Andrew Jackson, a proud Mason. Let us pray. Today, Freemasonry has about 1.3 million members in the U.S., down from 4 million in 1959. Told God never be part of the supreme architect of the universe. And Among the members today, African Americans, 
formerly relegated to a separate black-only branch of Freemasonry. And then there are members like those in Colonial Lodge No. 1821 of Washington, D.C. Most of them are in their 20s, and some attracted to Freemasonry by Dan Brown novels and movies like National Treasure. And they formed a new brotherhood called the Freemasons in honor of the builders of the great temple. Who here was sort of drawn by the mystery? I mean, I'll confess part of it. Yeah, I think it's all a combination of yeah. Yeah, history, uh, tradition, and, yeah. and mystery as well. You know there's ritual, but you don't know what it is. Exactly. Yeah. And that, How can you not be? That's alluring. Yeah. I mean, that's the reason people joined Freemasonry and not the Rotarians. So what about those secrets? What would happen if I found out the secret handshake and I weren't a Mason? Nothing. Because you wouldn't have to kill me? We, we might take you out and buy you a beer. The secrets of a Mason represent my integrity as a man. I took a promise that I would not tell you what the secrets of the Mason are. I didn't take a promise that I would care if you know what they are. Also a big secret, the meetings. No non-Masons or cameras are allowed, but St. John's Lodge No. 1 of New York City agreed to give us a glimpse of one. For meetings, Masons dress up in their Sunday best and, just like the original stonecutters, wear aprons. At the center of any lodge room is an altar. And all the activities of the lodge take place about the altar. Piers Vaughn is the lodge master. You know, would people talk about religion here in a meeting? Absolutely not. There are certain no. subjects which are prevented from discussing within the lodge, and religion is one, politics is another. Religion and politics. Someone said that Masons were raised right. Yes. <laughs> And then there are the ceremonies. Each one teaches a moral lesson related to the legend of one Hiram Abiff, the architect of King Solomon's temple. They can be a little unusual, as pointed out in this recruitment video. Even while blindfolded, try to concentrate on what you are asked, what is said to you, and what is happening around you. Everything will be explained to you in later sections of the degree. When a candidate comes in through the door, he's blindfolded because symbolically he's in a state of darkness, because masonry is all about moving from darkness into Masonic light. That it's about being unenlightened and then enlightened? That's right. As for what happens after that, well, that's a secret. But for members, Freemasonry is about something much simpler. I have met a group of men that I enjoy being with. These are people that I go out to dinner with, we socialize together. They're guys I like to hang with. They're my friends. 